just to warm up what is a lab notebook. A lab notebook is not a journal. It's not a record of communication between your lab mates and you or your PI. It's not simply a place to compile lab protocols and menus. It's also not yours to take home. But a logbook certainly is a legal document. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Today, I want to address one pain point of many labs is how you write a lab notebook. And most of the time, you'll be surprised this is not officially trained. I come across this NIH guide on how to write a log book and I will put a link so that you can read it for full context. Did you know that if you want your innovation to be commercialized, your log book is actually a legal document and you need to be treating your log book like one. So today I want to talk about some of the best practice that we should be keeping in mind when writing a log book. And I personally don't have formal training from any of my PI. I get complaints once in a while and I get to learn how it should be done. But I hope this video is going to set the best practice out there and make it easy for you to share and make it easy for you to implement them because having a complete and traceable logbook is so fundamental in the future if you take the time to detail organize your thoughts your methodology adjustment they're going to help you speed up your graduation because you're spending less time wondering what have i done what have i done to that experiment what's the concentration of that solution i used i don't know i make it up i don't know i make it up i don't know i make it up making up science is exactly what we want to avoid in PhD because you don't want to falsify your results. You don't want to misinterpret anything. Writing things down is so fundamental. And let's talk about how we can write things down better and be more efficient at it. There are three main types of lab notebook. The bound or stitched notebook, the loose leaf notebook and the electronic notebook. Each of these notebooks has advantages and disadvantages. While some of you may be more comfortable with one type of notebook over the other, the type of notebook that you keep will be decided by your PI, your principal investigator whom you're working with. There's an advantage to the bound notebook is that the pages would never be lost. It's also legally stronger because it's hard to modify it afterwards. But there are disadvantages, such as it's difficult to copy between pages. It is not logically organized most of the time, and it requires references to data stored elsewhere sometimes. The advantage of using a loose leaf notebook is that data can be stored together in a more organized way. But there are disadvantages such as the paper can fall out and it's difficult to authenticate the data in the notebook and say that it hasn't been ordered. Electronic notebooks are becoming more and more popular these days. It's easier for people to search with keywords. Digital data are also easier to store and cross-linked. However, implementing an electronic notebook, some of the time you require the paid software and also require more secure infrastructure. Typically, what goes in the lab notebook? First of all, the lab notebook should have a cover page, clearly writing your name and the year of writing the lab notebook, mailing address of your lab in case the lab notebook is lost. If you remember my video on file organization, Every project should have a unique name, like Apollo. There should be a few pages for table of contents. Because bound notebooks are hard to organize, it's essential that you make sense of the table of contents over the time and to explain which pages contain what information for the reader to find it. Basically, you need to include page number, date of entry, experiments that you have done, 
in the table of content. Now let's take a look at what typically goes in the experimental entries. You might already know that you write procedures, the reagents, and data every time you do an experiment. In each experimental entry, you're also documenting your thought processes, explaining why experiment was initiated, how the experiment was performed, and then the result. Bad data, good data, everything has to go in the logbook. Eventually, it is a legal document. Whenever you are accused of fraud, or if you want to patent the work. In the case that your research contributes to an issue of a patent, it will be closely scrutinized because it documents the claim to the discovery. And if anyone suspects that you have fraud in your work, your lab notebook will also be validated. And in the end, you should look into your logbook like it is a scientific legacy that you will leave in the lab. And in each of the experimental entry, you should always mention date, title, hypothesis or goal, a brief statement of purpose, the background. In other words, why did you perform this work? How the protocol was followed and how have you done the experiment exactly? Equipment use, calculation, reagent should all be included. In other words, how did you perform this work? raw experimental data and taped in information or referencing to other data location that you may have the data stored in the hard drive somewhere in the lab. Data analysis, processing of the raw data, graphs, interpretation, and idea for future experiments should also be written in the lab notebook. And any personal observation, planned observation or unplanned observation When you're recording how you did your work, it's important that you note as much detail as possible for someone else to repeat it. It may be essential that you record the product number, the serial number of the reagent that you're using, the expiration date of the reagent, how and where it's stored. There should be a reagent protocol specifying how each solution has been made. If you're using cells, Cell types, passage number, sources, growth medium should also be specified. If you use any instrument, the type of instrument, name, serial number, location should also be recorded. Simple things like using a centrifuge, the speed and the duration of spin has to be recorded. For centrifuge, people usually write RPM, but it is really important that you write down the value of G because RPM can mean totally different things between different centrifuges. Now here comes the ethic of writing a lab notebook. Everything that has happened in the lab must go into the notebook, even bad data points or outliers. And in the end, make sure you can't take out any page or remove any data as you want. Do not skip any pages in your lab notebook. You should write continuously. Failed experiment, contradictory experiment, they all need to be recorded in the lab notebook. And if you make a mistake, correct them by crossing it out with a single line and write beside it. Instead of removing a mistake or using correction fluid to correct it. In case you have a whole page that has problem, you can paste in a correction and sign and date everything with your correction without covering the original page. The best policy, remember, is honesty. You want it to be as transparent as possible with documenting your thought process and the procedure that has taken place in the project. If you want to learn more about how to write a good lab notebook, I highly recommend reading this webinar notes by NIH Training Materials. This is prepared by Philip Ryan, Scientific Program Analyst, and this is available online, and I found it really helpful and clear. And I hope someone has taught me this when I started my PhD. So I put a link down below in the description box and I hope this will inspire you to become a better scientist by keeping a much better compliant lab notebook. A logbook 
should be a document readable not only by you, but anyone that want to repeat your studies. So a good practice is after a day of experiment, you note down everything. First of all, what were the procedure done to that study? The important thoughts that are influencing the decision of that day, why you do that work. If there is one reference you use to make up a reagent, put that there as well. And ask your lab mate to read it and see if that person understands your handwriting. If that person understands every aspect and found it sufficient and informative. And as a rule of thumb, anything you make up as a reagent, you need to document how you made it. You can print it out from a source and cut it out and paste it to your logbook. That will save you time from writing, but that information has to be present so that anyone want to follow your experiment can do it without going out of your logbook. Apart from the brief story of why you do that experiment, the reagents, the procedures done on that animal subject participant, you also want to report the data in the logbook and a brief interpretation. You're not going to write an essay about it for sure, but if there is a gel image that you finished, you need to stick it on, make that logbook sufficient story to follow when you write your thesis. And again, all of these thought processes from the intro of why you do certain thing, how you could interpret that data, it has to be self-sufficient and other researcher can read and understand it. So basically, your logbook should answer this question. How is this experiment initiated? Is it because of a paper? Is it because of certain previous results and you have a thought to link that pivot of your experiment? How is everything done? What's the procedure involved? Step by step, list it out. If it is a standard procedure from a kit that you bought from a company, cut it out and paste it on your blog book so that the next person will know this is a product from WR Fisher and they will know exactly the serial number, the part numbers, they need to go back and reorder that reagent to do exactly the same repeatable work. Finally, you need to report all your results, just a summarizing statement of what you have found and in the logbook. And of course, you are going to publish this result in a better written form, but the logbook should capture the most important key components. And I know how we schedule time for lab work we almost don't really think much about scheduling time to write a well-written logbook. So today, I hope by the end of this video now, I hope I've convinced you it is important for your good science practice to keep a good, well-documented logbook for whatever research you are doing. It's for yourself in the future to write a better paper, more repeatable study. It's also for your co-worker being able to trace and found every single evidence they need to repeat that study. You don't need to write a whole essay about it, but remember to keep all the components that you think are essential for repeating that work. The key essence of science is repeatability and validity. You have to be thinking in the head that this is the document that you are leaving your scientific legacy for the next generation to come. And you know, there are logbooks that are framed in museum now. If they make a great discovery, those are the logbooks they will put in a museum. So you never know who is going to really judge your poor handwriting. <laughs> anyway, I hope you found this coffee break conversation engaging and stimulating. And if you think my points are helpful and relevant to your lab, don't shy away from sharing this with them and give them this positive, constructive platform to rethink science and do better in your PhD. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope to meet you at the comment sessions. If you have any tips to share about writing a law book, how your lab's practice is, do they have training for writing a law book? Comment below. I'm curious to know because I have to figure all of this out quite late and I'm embarrassed to admit how far I have come and I wish I knew them from day one. And trust me, if you were a starting PhD student and you have watched this video, you'll be on top of the game. And that's my mission to help you to become the best PhD student possible. This journey of documenting science. 
If you're not subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button so the next time this type of video that never get promoted on YouTube will be in your inbox the first thing. I need to thank Dr. Vicky Sherwood. This is an idea I get from her. Biomed Badass is her channel, so go check out her channel about resume writing and many other videos and send her some love. Vicky is a medical writer now and she was a PI and she told me one of the biggest pain points of a PI was not having a good logbook in the lab and students seem to have no clue what to do in the lab in terms of writing a logbook. So I hope this video is valuable and helped many of you out there who are student, PI, to focus on the science and make exciting discoveries. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.